thing is that Christmas will always win the war because they have the music. I mean, sure, there's the Hanukkah song, but I've never heard that in a fucking mall. <laughs> Hi. Welcome back to Kevin Pollock's Chat Show. I'm not Chat Show. I'm Sam Levine. A horse Sam Levine. But uh, look, the show must go on. Just because we have a little cough and a little uh, frog in the throat, we can't sleep in on a Sunday. God, I want to sleep in on a Sunday. Just one of these days. Um, Kevin is still in my home state, the Garden State, New Jersey. Kevin, I hope you're watching. Actually, no, I hope you're not watching. I hope you're out playing in the snow like a child, like an angelic child. It snowed in New Jersey. Um, but we miss you, and I guess I'll see you in next year. Mm. Uh, sorry, exactly. That's Hi, my Jamie. Mom's favorite thing to do at the end of the year is like, see you next year. Whenever well, it's like, I, the, whenever it's like um, New Year's Eve. But I won't see Kevin. I, I feel terrible. Like when he, we did our last show here a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I was in the bathroom when you guys left, and then as soon as I came out of the bathroom, I was like, oh, Well, you spend too much time in the bathroom. There's your answer. It's true. You know why? <laughs> because cleanliness is next to godliness, folks. Hey. <laughs> Uh, and uh, anyway, I missed him, and I didn't get to say goodbye, and I won't see him until January, I guess. I'm certain you'll see him soon. I don't know. You're, good. You're very close. Things could happen. <laughs> uh, like how are you, Jamie? I'm very well, very busy with, like, holiday, like, errands and parties and uh, fun nonsense, but it's fun stuff, so mm -hmm. that's good. But, uh, yeah, full, another full day today. I feel like I, and then, and yeah, and Kevin hasn't been around, so, but yeah. it's good, because I can get stuff done. So. Fantastic. Yeah. I've been getting very little done <laughs> on account of uh, I am not dating anyone of the Catholic or Christian persuasion this year, so I don't have to worry about Christmas. <laughs> brag. Sold. It is a brag. <laughs> I dated a lot of girls who celebrated Christmas, and so I would do Kevin's big things with Jewish, the family. Kevin's Jewish, and he, he's the one that insists on exchanging gifts, and I'm like, we buy whatever we want whenever we want it. What is the point? Like, why... Are we doing this? But he's you the one. You should make each other gifts like a mixtape. Oh, that's the greatest. That's the greatest form of love there is. Is I, a mixtape. Everybody knows that. That's true. My not my current car, but my most the car just before this one actually still had a cassette player in there, and uh, I always wondered who was you that can't. for. There you go. And then they told me at the dealership, they were like, well, the car that you're driving, you're one of the youngest people we've ever sold one to. <laughs> I was like. By how many years? He's like, most of the guys who buy this car are in their 50s. And I was like, now the tape player makes sense. I'm not giving up those spinners. It's sad now because you, you can't, it's really hard to even get like a mixed CD because most like, um, like my, Computers, I have a MacBook, yeah. there's no disk, disk drive. I know. So, and, and if you're, you're given a CD, it's like, well, where do I listen to it? Yeah, how am I going to put this on my, uh, on my phone? You can listen to it in your car is basically it. That's it. But it's still, it's the gesture. It is the gesture. Also, I still wear the uh, disc man on my upper arm. When I, <laughs> and when it skips I, when you... When I hit the gold gym. It skips gym, when yeah. you uh, jog. <laughs> uh, oh, enough of that nonsense. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, I feel like we have no other new business to cover. Uh, uh, I'm not going to say this at the end of the show because we're all going to want to get the hell out of here. But I just want to thank you the loyal fans and supporters of Kevin Pollock's Chat Show for another wonderful year. Um, we've, we've put out a lot of episodes and we don't do it because it makes us wealthy. We do it because we enjoy doing it and we know that you guys like it. And so from me and Kevin, thank you uh, for supporting the show. And we're gonna bring you more fun episodes in 2017. But we'll do this forever. No Sundays for anyone. No Sundays for anyone. <laughs> nope. Uh, I'm very, very excited about today's guest, so I'm going I'm to get to I'm more excited. Him. Now, I know you are. This is, <laughs> this is my Christmas gift to you. <clears throat> today's guest is a grizzled industry veteran who's played everything from skilled doctors and lawyers to cops and real estate agents and all the way back to shitty doctors and lawyers. A real actor's actor, you've no doubt seen him on several different hit shows, some of which even aired on TV. He's also a tremendous golfer, a solid bowler, and an A for effort softball player. Even though he loves country music, I'll try not to hold that against him during the interview. Please welcome Kevin Rahm. No, we have nothing to worry about. No, he knows that Christmas is always gonna win. He made the Hanukkah joke. Okay, yeah, we're good. Sorry. No! It's hey! All right, hey! How are you, buddy? I'm good. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like you. that. I, I think maybe the first since Fred Willard right? to do an, an, a bit on his own intro. Oh, really? Yeah. Fred I, Willard I will take, I, I like to be in that company. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Um, uh, boy, we, we, and by we, I mean me and Jamie, mm -hmm. are so excited to have you here for a variety of reasons. I mean, she, of course, loves you from your work on Mad Men, but I love you in addition to your work on Mad Men from Kansas City. Yes. Where you and I That's have gotten to hang out the yeah. last couple years in a row at the at the wonderful charity that our, our pals put together there. Mm -hmm. And um, and I hope I got that right. You are a tremendous golfer. I know that about I you. I play a lot of golf. Yes. I play a lot of golf. And you're a very fine bowler. I'm a I'm a decent bowler. Yeah. I'm a, I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't want to bet money with Jamie. No. Kevin, See, but that's that the thing, though. For as much as I play, I should be a lot better than I am. But I would just say that I'm decent. Is there a handicap system in bowling? I don't know. There really should be, right? Because if there were, I would bet. Yeah. Bumpers. But I don't bumpers. Like bumpers. I get bumpers. <laughs> if I get bumpers, I'll bet you. <laughs> you might do. Bumpers. <laughs> bumpers. Bumpers screw you up, though, because if it bounces off it, you got you don't know what's going to go. You don't well, know. Then, then you got to start playing angles. Yeah, yeah. And then like, it's like geometry. Cool. Yeah, then, then you got to use math. Oh, yeah, boy. look at it. Taking the fun out of the game. Uh, but softball, uh, okay. I don't remember. Well, it, I don't remember it going that well. Well, year one was not a good year. No, it was the first time I had picked up a glove or a bat in mm -hmm. several years. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I held my own year two. La this last year, I feel like mm -hmm. I held my own. All I remember any time we're on that field uh -huh. is how hot and humid it oh, is. Oh, it's so hot. Mm -hmm. It's so it was worse this year. Unbearable. It was worse this year. Now, as everyone complains, one year, I think four or five years ago, uh, they had to do it in July. Was that the wiffle ball one? It was back when you still used to do wiffle ball. I heard that one was the worst. We did we did at least four years of like wiffle concrete, ball. Like concrete, you were on concrete or some it's kind not, of astroturf? It's, turf. it's we're, on a, we're on a turf there, and it was in the middle of July, and the temperature without the heat index was already like 106. No, that's too. And then the humidity. That's when you cancel. That's when you say, you know what, the kids will be okay. Yeah. The kids will yeah. be fine. That's all right. No one's going to miss this. <laughs> no They're going to raise gonna... money. They're going to raise money whether or not we Absolutely. sprain an ankle. People have already paid hand. for the yeah, tickets yeah, yeah. to get in here. Someone will, someone will get up and do some jokes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was the year. I think that was the year Weird Al was there. And I may have posted a picture of the two of us. I mean, dripping in sweat. I've seen some photos from that year. Yeah. My favorite photo of this last year was I, uh, I have a photo of Triumph humping my head. Of course. Which was a coup. I, I feel mean, like I feel like I've made it. In now you've arrived. Now, I can finally put that. It's on my resume. Boy, your kids. Now you're a Special hero. Special skills. Them. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, yes, he uh, uh, he has brought Triumph the last two years, and I love seeing Triumph because when we visit the kids in the hospital, <laughs> and he comes in with Triumph, most of the kids, and of course it breaks my heart. Most of these kids are you know seven, eight, nine years old, yeah, they, and they don't know. They shouldn't. They shouldn't, shouldn't know. No. These kids were not the watching Conan do, in '95. That's, that's when you called Child Protective Services. But the parents. They light up like it's Christmas yeah. when Triumph comes into the yeah. room. Yeah, and uh, and that's one of it's my. It's more for ones. us. It really is. <laughs> Triumph really is more is. for us. Triumph for us and uh, Rob Riggle and Johnny Knoxville are Johnny. there for the kids. I don't. I don't ever go in a room with John anymore. Actually, it depends on how much interaction you want to do. Yeah. How much interaction you feel like doing yeah. that day? Because they don't know me. But uh, <laughs> don't say that. They, no, a the lot kids, of those kids are Madam Secretary fans huge, in a big way. Huge judging Amy fans from yeah. back in the day. Their yeah. grandmother made them watch it with them. Yep. Um, <laughs> But Johnny Knoxville, he's like even Elvis. if they don't know him, which 90% yeah. of the time they do, if they they're do, over yeah. eight, they know him. Yeah. But he's just amazing with kids. He's, he's the best. He has the, so many fart jokes just on the tip of his tongue, ready to go. It's because he himself <laughs> is, a, is a child. <laughs> yes. Perpetual, I mean, right? and he'll be the first one to tell you. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh man, I, I say it's my favorite weekend of the year. It really is. And uh, it's I- the only, It's the only reason I would leave town and come home on the seven, six, five o'clock in the morning flight, right. still drunk yep, for Father's for Day. Father's Day. Yeah. And they fixed that this year, I think, by yes, the way. Yes, it's the week before, it's right? The, I think it's the week after. Week, or, either either way. Father's Day and then, and then Kansas yeah, City. Yeah, because last Father's Day, I spent laying on the couch, nursing a hangover with my daughter sleeping on top of me. No. I felt like a winner. <laughs> It was my day, though. It really it was. was. My day. That's you know what, what I said. You know what? It was my day. I felt great about that. You do. That's the one day where you're like, Daddy wants to Daddy, sleep on the couch you know today. Daddy played poker till five in the morning and got on a six o'clock flight. Oh, Suck that's it. right. You were. Oh my God. Yeah. And I, I probably would have given it all money. back. I probably would have given you guys all your money back. Oh man. I took all of their money. <laughs> uh, I probably would have given it all back, but I had to go out on a, get on a plane. I understand. Yeah, you and uh, Hodgman, also John Hodgman, yeah, had to I, catch an early flight back to the East Coast yeah. for his family. Well, I'm glad they fixed that because yeah. uh, that, that was rough. Uh, now I have to have another reason to get really <laughs> hammered the night before Father's Day. 
<laughs> I'm sure I can find one. I think the re it's itself. It's its own reason. <laughs> That's, it becomes a, yeah. the ROM tradition. Just like my dad used to do, <laughs> I'm going to get Blitz today. <laughs> but for me, I'm just going to do it on one day a year. Mm -hmm. But speaking of your family, yes. it's my understanding you were born in Texas. I was born in Texas. And then raised in Louisiana. These, these are true things. Are these true facts These about are true you? facts. Fantastic. The internet did not lie. Did, well, not on that. How old were you when you moved? Uh, well, I was born in... My father was a helicopter pilot uh, in Vietnam and in the Army. Wow. And the reason I was born in Texas is because there was an Air Force, an Army base there where okay. he was training. So that's... We just happened to be there when okay. I was born. Got it. So we were not there long. I right. was back in Louisiana by the time I was two. Okay. Maybe one and a half even. And, uh, and you went to... Uh, now, this is one of my favorite facts about you that okay. I found uh, I feel like this is your research. life. Oh, this like is my, my high school drama teacher. This teacher's is very much. Out. This is your life. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know you were still in Louisiana by the time you went to uh, Loyola College Prep. This is true, because according to the internet, okay, you were a cheerleader. This is true for Loyola College this Prep in Freeport, Louisiana. Fun fact, please, about Loyola College Prep. At the time, it was all boys. Mm -hmm. uh, there were four hundred students for four grades, Got about hundred about hundred in a class. We had uh, one Jewish gentleman who his senior quote, my sophomore year, I think it was his senior year, and I didn't know him very well. I was afraid, I didn't know any, I was a terrible job. I was going to a terrible, terrible place. <laughs> um, I didn't, I just, I just, I just rained it in. I, I don't know, it's on you. the internet. I, I invite you to go there. <laughs> um, no, I, I did, he was just older than me, I didn't know him. Okay. It wasn't because I was afraid of Jews. At the time, at the time, I hadn't moved to Hollywood yet. Yeah, it's fine. I it's didn't fine. know they were okay. No, we, they were afraid of me. I was Mormon at the time. They were afraid you, of me. You didn't know we covered the horn. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. um, but his senior quote was, in the Catholic high school, and they printed it in the yearbook. <laughs> oh, boy. Jesus who? <laughs> Which I thought was genius. Yeah. I thought it was genius. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. One, one Jewish guy. Jesus who? Jesus, Jesus. I like this not guy. Not Jesus is who. No. Jesus who? Jesus who? Yeah. Like got milk? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, he might have gone on to do that ad campaign. Get, to think get about that it. guy on the chat show. I want to talk to him about his exploits. Um, yes, but I was a cheerleader. So you were a cheerleader? Yes. At, with other dudes, I assume. Eight dudes, eight girls. Oh, there wait, we had a sister. We had an all girls Catholic school that was our sister school, so they were our other cheerleaders. And so did, did you guys get together after school to, to practice? Oh, yeah. I went to cheerleading camp. So which was 800 girls I am and 10 guys. realizing what you did here, you were playing the long game. You were like, I was, I'm in an all-boys school. I'm in an all-boys school. We always went over to the girls' school. We got out like 10 minutes before them. Mm -hmm. And so we would go over there and hang out in their parking lot before they came out of school. Um, and I just thought, I, I can do two a days and get my ass handed to me by guys who are twice my size. Yep. Or I can go to cheerleading camp. And every, and then we were the only guy cheerleaders in the city. So oh every other cheerleading squad in the city wanted to come do stunts with us. Oh boy. And that wasn't, but it became a euphemism. I love it. How many people were violently injured during your cheerleading time? Um, violently? S enough to miss the next day of school. I don't think anyone missed a day of school. That's impressive. There, there were some good falls. Oh, I mean, yeah. Some hardcore. Usually the girls were throwing them. Of course. They were throwing them. I was not very big or strong. So I mean, like, <laughs> I, was, I was not. I, my, so I went, this last summer, I went to Hawaii with my family to go visit my high school cheerleading uh, partner, Leah Hudson. Hi, oh, Leah. my God. Her husband's in the military. They live in Hawaii. We stayed next to them and for a week and hung out in Hawaii. I love this. Story. And uh, I get there and I get on the trampoline. Like, we're off the plane for less than an hour. I get on the trampoline. I'm like, you ready for a double nine? To Leah. Uh -huh. Anyone cheerleading fans, you'll know what that is. And uh, I jump up. I try to do a double nine. And my el knee hits my elbow and I almost go off the trampoline. So, like, we're this close to, like, breaking an arm first day, trying to do something I used to do in high school. Yeah. Yeah. I try not to do anything I used to do in high school because it used to get me beat up. Uh, You're safe now. You're safe I mean, now. Uh, Kevin, Jerry's still out. Kevin will protect you. Um, uh, that Leah, and I, Leah and I were the weak links. We were, the, we were, <laughs> we were definitely, we, they would put us on the ends of the routines. Mm -hmm. And when we did backhand, everyone else could do back tucks and tumble and flip. We could, I would do a kind of a sideways back handspring. Yeah. We were not very good. Okay. Well, I, there was no, I was not doing any liberties. I wasn't holding her in with one arm over my head while right. she's standing there with one leg in the air. We didn't get that far. All right, but I mean, again, I think the A for effort comes into play here. I dated a, a lot of cheerleaders. There it is. 
There it is. Yeah. And that's uh, that's really the the Catholic high school boy's dream, isn't right? it? Right. Yeah. To date a bunch of cheerleaders. Yeah. yeah. Good for you. Right. I win. Um, you do win. And uh, and so I know I normally this is where I would say you know all the kids have the hey look at me disease. Yeah. And so uh, you know where did that come in school? But I know where this came for you. Okay. Because A, you and I have talked about it, but B, uh, tireless research done by Jason McIntyre. He he presented me with a dossier, uh -huh. and boy, some of it is <laughs> ugly. Is it Let is any of it redacted? Uh, no, he, no, it's all he there. has he has <laughs> a high level clearance. Um, but I know you you went to uh, Brigham Young. The worst thing for our nation. If Jay, if Jay Jason had high level clearance. <laughs> Well, we are, could, just, could it, could it be any worse than... Like, he would squander it. Yeah. He would do something, like, he would do the dumbest shit with it. You know what? I don't even know you. Is he here? He's I, don't right even, right. I don't even know you, but I feel like you would make daily briefings. <laughs> yes, it would. Right? He would at least make the daily briefings. <laughs> I feel like you'd do that. I don't even know you. Yeah. I feel like you'd make daily briefings. And here's the thing. I do know him, and he would make the briefings, but it would be like, all right, guys, just come tell it to me when I'm taking my morning shit. It would be like that. It would he be his bathroom. And, yeah. and his morning shit would be at 1 p.m. Yeah, obviously. Whoa. Yeah. No, I like it. Isn't, no. isn't that when everyone's morning shit is? <laughs> Some, not, not when you have a two-year-old. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Not when you have a two-year-old. No. Um, but we'll get to that two-year-old. Okay. We're not going to get to your two-year-old. No, that's not. Um, uh, uh, oh, so you finish up in Louisiana. Yes. You attend Brigham Young. No, I like, well, side note, I finished high school. Surprised this wasn't in the dossier. I'm a little disappointed. Uh, I finished high school in Texas. That was middle, not in the dossier. Middle of my junior year. Make me rip this I up. I moved to Atlanta, Texas. You know, I thought that that was a misprint. No, it's true. Atlanta, Texas. It's uh, near Queen City and Texarkana, right on the border. It's about an hour, hour and a half from Shreveport, where I grew up. Mm -hmm. And I finished high school there. Last year, of my year and a half. Okay. So then I then I left. Was on was the move on account of uh, another transfer? No. You just wanted to get out of Louisiana. Yeah, it it's was, a long story. It was, was it did was it have to do with a cheerleader getting murdered. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, we buried her and they started they were like sniffing close. Don't you shouldn't be saying this. I really shouldn't. Now what's the statute of limitation on oh, cheerleader death? In Louisiana, it's a week. <laughs> right. So yeah. Good. If they don't yeah. catch you within seven days, you've gotten away with <laughs> you get it. Seven days. As far as I You're know. You're like counting. You have a clock. There's an egg timer. <laughs> special egg timer that says seven days <laughs> you can buy Aww. at the local Walmart. Those poor cheerleaders in Louisiana, who will stand up for them? Not me. Um, so you finish up in Atlanta, Atlanta Texas. Texas. The, the, the run it, the, the, oh shoot, the, uh, the rabbits. We were the rabbits, but they were the, the rabid, rabid, so with our rabbits. The, the rabid the rabbits? Ra it, was, I, it wasn't rabid, it could have been a lot cooler. We were Ooh. the something rabbits. Okay. The Atlanta rabbits. Ramblin'. Maybe. Ram, maybe, maybe rambling. Maybe. It's a lot was of there alliteration fans. involved of, of any kind? There's what? <laughs> was there alliteration involved? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna try to so figure we can, this we out. Can, we can narrow it I down. <laughs> Kevin is watching, as it turns out. This is fantastic. Oh, Pollock is? The only thing he has to say so far is more, sh more less talk about the morning shits. Okay. Um, Good to know. Oh, he also said quit stealing his bits because you said, hey, look at me disease. Okay. I've said that in almost every interview I've ever know, he done. He said to me, and I Sam always say, to quit as bits. Kevin says, hey, look at me disease. He, looks, yeah. he gets enough credit. Jesus. He gets enough his, credit. Your name is in the fucking title of the show, man. Look, we're here doing a <laughs> podcast and you're working on a movie. Yeah. God. Love you, Kevin. Please don't fire hey, me. Hey, Kevin. Um, uh, so <laughs> fire, you, me, fire me from your notepad. Fire me from my non-paying gig that I sh show up for. Um, and uh, okay, so you finish in Atlanta, Texas, mm -hmm. and then you head up to Brigham Young, and uh, a couple years later, a couple years later, and then you wanted you initially wanted to go into law. Yes, that was my intent. That was your intent. Yeah, growing up in Louisiana, at least from in my small world of Louisiana. Uh, uh, you either took over a family business, mm -hmm. you became a doctor, a lawyer, or a, a laborer. Those were your options, mm -hmm. you know? And I was not a huge fan of labor or, or have the skills for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't want to go into medicine and I didn't have a family business to take over. So mm -hmm. I had done debate in high school and thought I could, I could, I feel I felt like I could do that. So that was my intent was to go to law school. Okay. And so then at some point in college, mm -hmm. you have a change of heart. 
Well, it goes it goes a little further back, back to at Loyola College oh, okay. Prep. Um, my freshman year, they had a thing where the senior was a big brother to the freshman that you didn't know. They got would it. introduce you and to kind of run you around the school. And my freshman year, I got a very large big brother who was on the football team and stuff. And he came to me one day and said, by the way, you're auditioning for the school play. I said, no, I'm not. And he goes, yes, you are. <laughs> and so I did, because uh, wow. I was terrified. Um, and so I, I played uh, Lucius Servant to Brutus in Julius Caesar. And I had like wow. two lines, it was a strand theater, this beautiful theater downtown they had yeah. redone. And they did that every year. They did one Shakespeare play a year. And I did that. The next year they did the Scottish play and I did that. And so that kind of gave me, but what happened was we would go, are the girls in the play were from the were from St. Vincent's mm -hmm. for the all girls school. And so all of a sudden, like I'm getting out of school a little earlier and I'm hanging out with all these girls from the school and they're much older than I am and they're like, think I'm cute mm -hmm. and like, you know, putting makeup on me and like, I'm like, this is awesome. So I'm getting attention there from sure. the ladies. Sure. Um, and I thought, so that's what led to, I'm at BYU. I, and I, when I moved to Atlanta, Texas, they had no debate program, huge drama program. So I got thrown into a drama class. Ah. And I did it. And because I, you know, I, and I got away with it and um, we won some awards and stuff at the time, local stuff and state stuff. But uh, when I got to college and thought I'm just going to go to law school, that's what I should do. Right. I saw a play. I saw Tally's Folly, which is a two hander. Okay. And this woman named Kim Abunawara was the lead. And A, I fell in love with her on stage, the, what she was doing and who yeah. she was and her persona. And uh, th thought, oh, that's how you do it. That's what I was supposed to be doing when we were doing those plays. Mm -hmm. That's really good. I think I could do that. Mm. And I should try it now. Now's the time. It's my freshman year of college. Why not give that a try? Worst case scenario, I take a class, I don't like it, I go back, you know, I go back on my track to law school. Sure. And I took Kim's Kim was teaching a class. Lucky you. Early acting or whatever. And I never looked back. It was over. Wow. Within six months I was a major and I pretty much quit going to school and just did plays. And, and then uh, while attending, you won the Irene Ryan Award for Best College Actor. That's true. You have to dress up like Granny Clampett and do an impression of her. And the best one, no, it's not how it works. That's, there's <laughs> no, that's no. almost. But no. Irene Ryan was Granny Clampett and she has a scholarship that they give out every year. That's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, sign up, Mireille Enos won it two years after me who also went to college with me. Wow. Yeah. So you, you when you went, it was like the, uh, it's like the oh god! It was like the Harvard class of uh, I forget which one. There was yes. one where it's all there. Oh, Neil Butte was there when I was at BYU. Aaron Eckhart was there when I was at BYU. It was, there was a, there was a really and there were ten other people just as if not more talented than us. Yeah. Who we had this amazing group of people at the time. That's pretty which good. I, you know, yeah, it was amazing. It was kids. Oh, that's one of those uh, happy moments in time. Yeah. So between Louisiana, yes, back in Texas, yes, then BYU, you already mentioned you were at the time a Mormon. Yes. Uh, you are now, as I like to refer to, a recovering Mormon. Yes. Fully recovered, I'd say. Oh, good for you. Yeah. I mean, I have to go to a meeting like once a year, but mm -hmm. it's not weekly. Okay. No, it's not like uh, being in the uh, army reserve. <laughs> No, you know, not at all. Once a and month. And you know what? They can't call me back up. <laughs> they can they, try. They can try. I change my number. They'll always try. <laughs> well, they will. Um, and so I'm, I'm personally curious, because yes. this is something we haven't talked about. When did that change for you? The When were you like, hey, this is, was a fine way to be raised, but I want to... I knew at 12. Yeah. At 12, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. I have a couple of... And actually, it was really interesting. I had... a. Uh, there was a really anti-Mormon thing going on in the yeah. late 70s, early 80s in the, in the South. Mm. Like they made the film The Godmakers and like they thought we had horns too. Yeah. And um, uh, there weren't a lot of Jewish people so like they turned to us to pick on. I don't, I don't know at the time. Weird. It was not weird. Um, so I, a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, like 10 or 12 years old, hands me this anti-Mormon pamphlet and it's like 10 questions about Joseph Smith. And I was like, oh, okay. And he was giving it to me as a, hey, check this out. I'm worried about you. It Ooh. wasn't a, it was a friend of mine. Yeah. And I read it and like six of them were ridiculous. And then there were like three that were like, uh, and then like two of them like, wait, that's a really good question. Yeah. And so I took it to my ecclesiastical leader and said, which you call a bishop in the Mormon church. I said, hey, uh, Bishop so-and-so, hey, these are, the, obviously these are stupid, but this is a really good question. And he said, don't look at that. Which is exactly, <laughs> I was like, that is the appropriate response. That is exactly the appropriate response. And I said, wait a minute, no. Yeah. This, the whole point is we ask and we're told if it's true or not. That's one of the main tenets when you're trying to convert someone. Sure. Um, so and that, so I, even at, at that, that's the seed was planted. Yeah. And, you know, and then there's a bunch of other stuff with, you know, the whole premise is that if you live it, you're happy. And I, 
I knew a lot of people who were living it and were very unhappy, mm -hmm. and it didn't make me happy. And there was a lot of, uh, uh, I just saw, I saw a lot of fault. But then I did my due diligence. I had a familial guilt and obligation. I did a mission. For I was two just years. that's where I was going next. You did the mission. Yeah. You traveled the world. No, just Switzerland and France that's and islands world. east of South Africa. From from Louisiana to Texas yeah, to Utah. I got, Come on, I had that's friends, the world. I had friends who went to Haiti and were chased with like burning tires. Yeah, and another friend who went to Idaho. I was like, I got no wow. offense to Idaho, but I didn't want to go there for two years for no. to serve the Lord. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I got to go to Switzerland, France, and then islands east of South Africa. And I would not trade that experience for anything, but I still, you know how people have like the college, I'm not ready for the exam nightmares? Right. I have the nightmare where I'm leaving on another mission tomorrow. Ooh. And I'm like, no, but I don't want to do that. Oof. I, I didn't sign up for no. that. I don't want to do that. So have you seen Book of Mormon? Genius. I... And it is, we just had, we had a breakfast with some friends of mine who are also recovering. Um, and uh, they, we, it's it's so much funnier. The, the more you know about Mormonism, the funnier it is because it's unbelievably accurate. <laughs> it's terrifyingly accurate. And I, I was that guy. Yeah, I was the guy that was going to change the world, and I gained I gained almost two hundred pounds in the middle of my mission. Wow! I had an ulcer at one point during my mission. Oh wow! I was yeah, it was not a pleasant time. Not taking not taking good care of yourself no. there. but you got it back together. I got it. I, I pulled it. I reined it back in. You did. You I got it back, back together. In. And here's here's the gap that yes. I could not okay. find in the research. The gap. Okay. Yes. So yeah. I've got you as a college graduate. Right, okay, I feel like I'm being tested, go. And then really, from there, I'm not, I can't make the, where did, how did the acting professionally come about? So, Aaron Eckhart was a year ahead of me in school, and he wasn't really, he was in the film program, but I don't think, he wasn't in the theater program, he was a film major, and he was a model, and he would do, he would be like, when the, when the movie The Week came through Salt Lake, mm -hmm. and Touched by an Angel and Promised Land was being filmed there, big movie would come through once a year, movie of the week, and he would get these jobs through his modeling agency in Salt Lake, and he would be the helicopter pilot for the day and get paid a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Or do a weekly thing and get paid a thousand bucks. And I was like, dude, if that guy can get a, if he can work, he's, he wasn't, he, if, I didn't know if he was studying, I don't think he was, he definitely wasn't studying acting in the theater program. Mm -hmm. He might've been doing it somewhere else, but he wasn't an actor yet. And I thought, and I was, I considered myself an actor. And I was like, if that guy can get work, I can get work. So I went and got his agent. Uh -huh. in Salt Lake, and I did Touch by an Angel, I did Promised Land, I did like movies, I did a couple of movies of the week, I, got, I became SAG eligible, and, that, and then in 96, um, in like December of uh, 95, my two best friends were leaving BYU. Me, Ray was going to New York, my friend Todd was gonna go to grad school, and I wasn't Mormon anymore. I had mm -hmm. long left, I still had to go to church and stuff, but I did not wanna be there anymore, and then right. felt guilty, I felt like I was taking someone's spot, you know? And um, so I decided to move to LA. So I moved to LA in, uh, it was in 96, I think it was the spring of 96, was April, I think of 96. Mm -hmm. And that was it. They waited were... tables for three years. And I quit my waiting tables job in December of 99. Uh, because- uh, Everything's is, relative. Everything's relative. Yeah. And it was the thing, that we weren't gonna start shooting until middle January, mm -hmm. but, and I wanted to work up to the day because I was so paranoid about not having money coming in. Right. And how long, I didn't know how long they were gonna take to pay me. I was just, you know. Like uh, Andy I was, Kaufman. I was terrified. Never I never believed yeah, it was real. Right? <laughs> and uh, and I, I went to them right around Christmas. I said, okay, so I wanna go home for Christmas. They're like, we can't let you. I said, let me, let me rephrase this. I'm gonna go home for Christmas, mm -hmm. so either I have a job when I come back or not, but I'm going home for Christmas. So I went home and I stayed a little extra. Good for you. Yeah. And, uh, and then you didn't need it. And never went back. And never looked back. Uh, and then uh, uh, a little show called Judging Amy. Yeah. Comes about. That must have been, what, an, a year or two after that? Uh, Judging Amy happened after Jesse. Oh, yes. Which was of course, the, 20 yeah, episodes of Jesse. Tw I, I did, yeah, I did 20 episodes of Jesse. Wow, that was a lot of episodes. Um, that was a lot of episodes. But Everything's Relative was the one that thing. That, 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 was, the, that, that was, was the Mitch Hurwitz that, that put me on the map, the... that put me over the edge, and then a Jesse for a year, and then uh, Judging Amy. And then Judging Amy. And that was a big one. That was 66 episodes. Yeah, that was three years. This is, this is it was seasons three to six, and this starts a trend in your career that I'm sure you're no stranger <laughs> to noticing. Now, let me, let me just tell those If you want to kill a show. No, no, quite the opposite. If, if, if you want to, oh, I want to get on some show. You've got to win the actor lottery four times in a row. Mm. You've got to get cast in the pilot. Yeah. The pilot has to get picked up. Yeah. Then the show has to be successful enough for them to order 
additional episodes so you get a full first season uh -huh. and then that first season has to be successful enough to get more that seasons. they keep ordering more seasons mm -hmm. after that so we're talking four lottery wins there or which are almost impossible or, or <laughs> you can wait till the show's on the air mm -hmm. and usually join it as a guest and then just slide on slide in slide on in there to regular yep you that's how, that's son also of a how bitch. i have sex Oh wow! You wait till uh, just wait till they're not looking. You wait till Aaron Eckhart the... does all the heavy lifting. I find out whoever whoever Aaron Eckhart was dating last, <laughs> right? And I just slide on in there. Um, I'm not going to tell you. This is a terrible story, so I'm oh, only going to tell one half of it. Please, okay. This is a this is a true story. It's I will the dirty not. Half, though, right? This is the dirty half. Yeah. I will not say okay. the actress's name. Oh. Many years ago, I was at the Slutton Place, as they call it, the Sutton uh -huh. Place Hotel in Vancouver. Oh yeah, been there. Uh, and I in the lobby bar there. Oh yeah. On any given I night, it well. it's TMZ's yeah. wet dream. It's awesome because all the actors yeah. are staying there, and I'm down there, and there is a somewhat famous actress okay. there who was very drunk. Okay. And she kept that telling me- That doesn't narrow it down. I'm Go not on. gonna help you narrow it down. Okay. And she kept telling me how cute I was and wanted to know how old I was and how many people I'd slept with, the whole thing. And I'm like, oh, she is absolutely wanting to know if it's legally acceptable and socially acceptable to take me back to her okay, room so you just narrowed it. So she's a little older than you. We've narrowed it down. Yeah, she was Go a little on. older than me. Okay. And uh, I was only 19 at the time. I love it. And, uh, did you have the spiky hair? Uh, and uh, and did I did the, not have the spiky hair. Were you wearing a headband? Hair's way too thick. Were you wearing a headband with a spiky hair? No, he's no? talking about a recent oh, oh, photo oh, yeah. I posted from not Team Pardon. movie. No, this was after that. Okay. And, uh, and so I'm thinking to myself, wow, th this is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. It's and hard. then we are walking out of the bar. Going to the elevator bank. Walking out of oh, the yeah. bar it's through on. the lobby. It's on. When Aaron Eckhart rolls on in. And Shoot, just he was shooting her the away. core, I think. Just swooped her away. And he walks in and he sees her and he goes, oh hey Aaron. He says, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just going to bed. And then Aaron went, no, 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 no. Let's get you another drink. Let's get you a nightcap. And takes her back into the bar. And I was like, Aaron Eckhart, wow, you just made the list. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so he's on your list. He is on the list. He, when we share a birthday, no less. So he Pisces on Pisces he crime <laughs> coming up, coming, <laughs> coming to a theater near That's you. That's a thing. That's and I've hilarious. not run into him since and been able to confront him about that. But let's be honest, he did her a favor. Wow, <laughs> he did her a favor. Uh, but uh, but that's my Aaron Eckhart swooping that's in a good, the That's a better story. story. So what's her name? I could not tell you. It would be it would be right. ungentle me. What uh, movie was uh, she working on? I could not tell you. <laughs> could not say. Um, what year hair. was it again? Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? <laughs> One last time. No, but who was it though? One last time. Just 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 her name. Just for me. For us. What was the, the initials? Oh, uh, we said initials at the same time. I said, oh, aw, you must adorable. be soulmates. Sorry, Kevin. Um, <laughs> anyway, back to you. Yeah, please. Yes. Um, so, uh, so here is, uh, let's see, uh, episodes or seasons three to six. Yes, judging, judging Amy. Amy. You started as a guest star. Mm -hmm. No, that one, that one, I, that one's, oh, that's, that's the only right. time I that's came in as a regular. Right. They were Dan, Dan Futterman. Futterman. I tell people that I gave little... Dan Tutterman time off to write Capote. That was my purpose on the on the show because he did. He wrote Capote in the meantime. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. And then he, he came back season seven and I left. Right. But uh, that was the only one that I tested for like it was a regular show. Okay, and that's they what were I did adding a new character. But Housewives and Mad Men. Those are next. Those were both guest star, a couple of episodes. Yes. Next thing in Oma Regular. Now let's talk about Desperate Housewives. Yes, please. There's another one. So you follow up 66 episodes with 53 episodes. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Not great. Almost 200. Se seasons four to eight. You do four seasons. Yeah. Uh, and this one, as you said, you started as a guest star. I started, the, the deal was maybe, it was three episodes guaranteed. Right. As a guest. And that was it. That was the guarantee. And they were bringing you in, and, and uh, this, was, this was kind of a big deal, because they brought yes. you in, uh, uh, Lee McDermott, married to Bob. And no, you we guys, got married on the oh, show. You got married, oh, that's right, yeah. of course, you got married on the show. But you guys were the first gay couple to live on Wisteria Lane. Yes. And uh, I know Mark Cherry made a, because they asked him, oh, what's going to happen with the gay couple? And his answer was, you know, they're going to be like any other couple. And that was 100% how the show played yeah. it. There were no issue-driven episodes. Nope. It was just, there was a, there, were, there were There was an early, like in the, in the first episode, there was early, there was a really funny joke where I say my partner, Bob, mm -hmm. and it takes a minute for Terry Hatcher to, she's like, oh, oh, oh. And, like, and the otherwise, I mean, there were jokes about our 
decor and our mm -hmm. taste and stuff compared to theirs. Right. But it was not based on the fact that they were just another couple on the just street. Just another couple. Yeah, which and, I loved. And so, so how was that for you as an actor? Was that the first time? Uh, that was the first time on, on, uh, on, television, on television that I would played a gay character, mm -hmm. and especially the highest profile. Oh man, yeah, that that show was at its enormous. Peak, at its peak in, in seasons four and yeah. five. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it, you know, it's funny. The funny story is I auditioned for Bob, and I was working on it. I was doing a one week on Scrubs, mm -hmm. and I had a bald cap on the day <laughs> that I would, it was my last day of work. I was wearing a bald cap because I had Lyme's disease, and they had to find the tick on oh. it. You know? And so, and my now wife was visiting me mm -hmm. in L.A., so she's on set with me at Scrubs, where they had those old hospital set uh, in oh, the valley. Oh, the one on right? the valley on, Not on Riverside. Not far from Universal, yeah. where my audition was. Yeah. And I'm supposed to read for Bob. I know it's like, let's say four o'clock. And at three fifty, at four o'clock's the, the absolute last time I can walk into that door and audition for this role. Yeah. Then I was kind of like, eh, I don't know. You know, I don't know that I want to play that part. I don't know that I want to be on that show. Mm -hmm. um, like, cause I needed the money <laughs> desperately at the time. And uh, long story short, we, I, they wrap me like with 10 minutes to spare. We get to Universal and they won't let my wife it stay in the car when I park the car in the lot because oh. she's not on the list. Oy. And I go off on this gate guard. I'm like, are you, you want her to sit on the effing curb while I go audition for this stupid show? Like she's, see, she's a surgeon. She doesn't yeah. give a shit about you or this yeah. place. She's not stealing anything. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. And I was like, no, I'm not going in. I was like, fuck the audition. And my girlfriend at the time, my now wife said, nope, I will stand right here, go audition. Ugh. And so I walked into that room hot. I was livid and I read Bob. And Mark Cherry goes, did you look at the other character? Oh, yeah, he's actually funnier. <laughs> and he goes, will you look at that for a few minutes and come back? Like, sure. And I went out and I came back in and just was hot as oh. Lee. Came in as Lee, just bitchy. Ooh. I was just bitchy. And that's how I got the job. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife takes credit for that one. And she well should. Yeah. And that gate guard, let's be honest. Yeah, you, know, you know what? And you know, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. gate guard. Let's not, let's not give uh, just, credit. Just poor guy, just doing your job. Just doing his job. <laughs> the gate guards, uh, oh man, I've had some I've had some run-ins myself. It's become ridiculous. Yeah. I had an FBI buddy visit me uh, uh, on set of Lethal Weapon last week. Mm -hmm. And he flew with his weapon on the plane but they wouldn't let him on the Warner Brothers lot. Zero tolerance. Don't you want the FBI guy to have a gun? I, I, what if Michigan J. Frog comes out and you gotta, you know. What if uh, a Bill <laughs> W. guy shows up? Michigan, Michigan J. Frog. Michigan J. Frog. Hello, my baby, hello, uh, honey. Come on. That's the name? Yes. yes. I didn't know he had a name. Of I just saw the Warner Brothers Frog. No, Michigan no, J. Frog. Michigan, J. Michigan J. J. What does J stand for, do we know? J. J. It stands for, <laughs> uh, I like it. I Probably Chuck, what, Chuck Jones. Jones. Jones, maybe. Michigan Jones. Why do you have to go be all technical? I just Michigan went for the Michigan J, joke. I like that. Yes. I did not know um, that. Yeah, remember when the WV was a network? Yeah. He was their mascot. Yeah. Is it the same frog from the cartoon who wouldn't sing, who would only sing when it's private? Yes. Same he was frog, only in right? one short ever. He was only in one short. Yes. I loved that cartoon. Yeah. And then they spoofed it in uh, Spaceballs. Yes. Yes. With the Alien. Same alien. Uh... <laughs> All right, I want to jump More around. More about that. Please, jump around. <laughs> I jump do want to jump around. Please. Because I want to talk about uh, one of my favorite films from 2004. Okay. Uh, called Nightcrawler. Yes. Which you are in. I am in that. And uh, boy, did I like that movie. It's a good a movie. A whole lot. It's a really good movie. Dan Gilroy. Amazing. Uh, of the first, Gilroy. First time director. First time director. Well, he wasn't a first time writer, though, no, right? No, no, no. He'd, he'd written before he'd that, but that was his first one that he'd written and directed. Yes. And, uh, and when I say of the Gilroys, I mean Tony Gilroy, of course, is, yes. is his brother, uh, who is also brilliant. And, um, and so I'm curious how, was that just an audition? Yeah, just an audition. I got the script and they sent me the script and said, oh, you have an audition for this if you want it on Tuesday of next week. Mm -hmm. And I read that script and some, you know, some scripts, obviously, you put it down, you go have the sandwich, you come back. Right. This one I read cover to cover in record time and then immediately started reading it again. Yeah. Like I got to the end and went, what the fuck? Yeah. What was that? Yeah. And then went and read the whole thing again. And it, it translated even better on the screen. Like a lot of time you'll read a really amazing script sure. and you're like, that's not, that was, the script is so much better. This right. was even better as a movie. Because he clearly was, he had, he was writing from the point of view of directing it as well. Mm -hmm. So he knew what he wanted and he got it. Yeah. But working on it, that was, a, it was an audition. I went in and read, um, I think I, uh, is it Mindy? Marlon, Mar Mindy Marin, I think, to cast that, and I went and read for her, and um, I think, I hope so, sorry if not, but uh, went in and read, and then went and met him, and 
uh, they they liked me and liked it, and like, I was cast. And that was it. And it was one of those things. It's like I knew Jake Gyllenhaal was going to be in it. Mm -hmm. I knew Dan Gilroy. Mm -hmm. But it, you you, have, you, never, you don't know what's, what it's going to turn into. Right. And it was we shot over the I shot for like two weeks in L.A. and it was kind of it seemed going from something like Mad Men, which has had a thing and like the spaces and it's a set thing and. Right. And this seemed like kind of a low budget deal. Like we were running around getting shots and there was a lot of handheld and you know, it was just like, you d he had no idea what it was gonna turn into. And then when I saw it, I was, I mean, I was happy to be a part of it at the sure. time. But then you see it and you're like, holy cow. Yeah, and so all your scenes are in the, the newsroom. Yes, thing, I guess. Yeah. yeah, in and around the newsroom. Yeah, and, uh, and boy, Renee Russo She's in that great. movie was She's so good. such a, a welcome breath of right? fresh air. Um, and they're married, by the way. Well, that makes sense. Um, and uh, and the, the cutest couple, and he, she's so lovely. She's just the loveliest mm -hmm. um, sweetheart of a person. Yeah. And and generous as an actor. Yeah. And so is he. And I, you know, I, and people ask how is he. I'm like I don't, you know. He was in a state. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't say that he was methoded to the point where you he, you didn't have to call him by the character name or anything like that. But you know, he was he had lost. 40 or 50 pounds, yeah, no, he's was barely eating, was working 12 hours a day, you know, running home at night, and like, mm -hmm. he was turned into a coyote, ultimately. Yeah. Um, seriously, that was his, like, that was his animal. No, he's, uh, he's one of the most dedicated actors of his generation. It was unreal. So he was in it, you know, and he's, I, so I just didn't, I, I wasn't like, hey, so what are you doing for fun? Like, you know, I just, I just didn't do that on set. I just left him alone, but yeah. he, was, he was very generous and lovely and always checked on us, and, and they were both in a, the, because most important to me, I like at this point, I have my friends, I have family. Mm -hmm. I don't. If I make a friend on set, it's a bonus. Sure. Right. I'm there to work. Right. You know. So, uh, in we had you know the scenes with the three of us in that room watching the footage, and on camera, off camera, his coverage, close up, no matter what, always present, always challenging, would respond to whatever, and that to me is the sign. That's who I want to work with. Those are the actors Absolutely. that I want. Because he wanted to play in the moment. And that's, mm -hmm. that's all I ask for. That's tremendous. So I give him an A+. Plus. Well, I'm happy to hear it. I, I only have... <laughs> I'm sure he is, too. I'm sure he is, too. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just going to share this with you, because I don't think I've ever told this story on this show or any other podcast. It's the, a, a Jake Gyllenhaal story. Um, so he had stopped by the set of Freaks and Geeks many, many years ago, and so I'd met him a couple of occasions. Right. And then I don't see him for many years. Right. And I see him at a party about... Uh, perfect. And I see him at a party. Uh, I think that I think that's the light for you. I think absolutely. Do not tell the story. And uh, as I see him at a party about eight or nine months after Brokeback Mountain uh -huh. has come out, and uh, I see him at this party, and he's there with I don't know if it was his girlfriend at the time or whomever. And uh, and I walk over, and remembering he had a pretty good sense of humor, I uh, I make you know small chit chat with him for a second, and then I say, listen, I got to tell you how much I uh, loved you in the the gay cowboy movie. And, uh, and then he just kind of shoots me a weird look. And then his girlfriend goes, yes, isn't Brokeback Mountain amazing? And I went, Bro oh no, I was talking about City Slickers. Because you see, he plays Billy Crystal's son oh. in City Slickers. <laughs> and he laughed so hard. And I was like, I'm the first person to make that, that joke. Really? And he's like, yes, you were the first. No well, one's no, ever said that. He actually said that Aaron Eckhart made the joke about 10 minutes prior. Yeah. So and God damn way, it, he was, Eckhart! He was with the same girl from yes. the bar that you were trying yeah. to pick up. God! Aaron Eckhart, cock block extraordinaire. Aaron Eckhart would never be that clever. <laughs> um, wow. It's what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've never met him. Uh, I've only had the one interaction with him. Mm -hmm. He was pretty clever that night. He sure was. <laughs> uh, hey. And um, anyway, that's my Jake Gyllenhaal story, and I'm so glad I could one. share that with it's you. A good one. Thank you. Um, so, uh, um, friends. The gay cowboy movie. The gay cowboy movie. I mean, yes. Come on. Yes, friends. Uh, so, friends. Yeah. My, Tim. My favorite show. Tim. Is it really? It was. It's in my top three. It's good. Yeah. It's. It holds up too. It's yeah. funny. It really is. And you were very funny on that episode. Thank you. It was because so rarely does the guest star of any show get to be kind of the main story, the main focal yeah, point, especially right. on a half hour multicam. Yeah. And, uh, and Tim the, really the was. the one with Monica's date. Yeah, so the storyline no. in the episode, I think, I don't remember. Oh, with Rachel's date, well, I wasn't mm -hmm. even the name of the title, I thought it was part of the title. Um, so the, 
the storyline is you were working under Monica mm -hmm. at the at her restaurant. Yes, you are sous also, chef. You're a sous chef, and you're also dating Phoebe. Yes. And you are a <laughs> terrible sous chef. Pathetically so. You are a terrible <laughs> yeah. sous chef yeah. and a terrible boyfriend. Oh, yes. And so Phoebe wants to break up with you, and Monica wants to fire you. Yeah but they agree that it would be horrible to do both on the same day. So they're fighting over who gets to do it first. Exactly. And, and I, ironically, Rachel has a date with a Mormon. Ah, that is... Uh, that wasn't That me. was not planned. Not planned. Fantastic. Not planned. Um, so my question to you, uh, as someone who liked that show so much, and someone, I actually went to a bunch of tapings, yeah. but I never worked on it as an actor, mm -hmm. but I've all, often heard actors describe their time on Friends as the most well-oiled machine. Oh. And the best craft service I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. Uh, Unbelievable, like Slurpee machines. Yeah. Like genuine in the store Slurpee, like crazy. Like a whole, a whole, that, and that stage night, is it, no, what, they're on stage 24-ish? Mm -hmm. 24, I think, is the friend stage. Mm -hmm. um, it is the largest of the sitcom stages. Yeah. And the whole back wall was food. Yep. Like, the fact that all of them weren't 300 pounds at the end, I don't... I don't think any of the actors ever touched that crafty table. Of course not. They couldn't. They no. couldn't. They had trainers and special diets. And that, was, that was the only time I was ever set struck. I was... <laughs> what was it? I, was no. I said something uh -huh. bad. It was the only time I was ever set struck. <laughs> when I yeah. sat down in the Central Perk, I was like... Because oh. that was the show I watched in college. Yeah. When I was still in, that, it came out while I was in college yeah. and, you know, doing theater and didn't even know that I wanted to do television and film necessarily. Um, and I would, we, that was our show. We'd get home on Thursday nights. On, was, you know, we had a VCR, but no one used it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, so I was, I was set struck. That's And great. I will give a compliment to both um, uh, Courtney, I mean, uh, Cor poor Courtney was having a, she was, anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, her, her, have lives well, sometimes. no, her, her father had passed away the week uh, we were shooting my episode. Oh. So she wasn't even there. I went back the second week and got to be there when um, Sean Penn was doing his Halloween episode oh, that yeah. year. Because we had to shoot my stuff in, with her in front of an audience. So I did my stuff with Lisa Kudrow that week without Courtney. Wow. Um, but Jennifer Aniston, who I had nothing to do with the whole time, and Matt LeBlanc, who I had nothing to do with the whole time, Independently, each of them came up to me and said, "How are you doing? Is everything okay? Do you need anything? Are you being? Are they taking care of you?" That's fantastic. And I just and I've taken that to heart as I've moved on in my career. Absolutely. And been in the position of being the regular and guests come in. It's Absolutely. Like they were inviting me into their home and saying, "If you need anything, please let me know. We'll yep. make sure it gets taken care of." Yep. That's, and I thought that was so. I just I still remember that. To that this is day. good on them, and that is absolutely the way it it, it should be. A hundred percent. So good for them. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask. Some questions from our oh, audiences. Please. Let's do it. Uh, they they want to know some good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, let's Sorry, see. I'm married, ladies. He is married, <laughs> and he's got a child. Um, do you hate children? I do not care for children. <laughs> do not. How care do you? For okay, them. I understand not wanting them. Yep. Or not wanting them on your thing. No, I adore children. Okay. And I, All right, because that was, that was, was going to go down a dark road. It was. No, okay. I adore kids right. as long as after I'm done playing with them, I can give them back. That, that was that way for years. Yep. I was that way for years. I was yeah. the best uncle in the world. Yeah. Ish. I wasn't the best uncle in the world. I was a great, I was a really, I was a decent uncle. Yeah. Decent? <laughs> that was okay. <laughs> Passable. Yeah. Okay. I was an uncle. There it is. <laughs> All right, I take it back. I said we're going to get to fan questions, and we will. Okay. But I want to do a segment right now, and I, this may be the first or second time I've been able to participate in this segment. It is called Famous Questions. Okay. Uh, it is a segment that uh, Kevin and Jamie created, I guess. Uh, and Does so, that mean Jamie and then Kevin took credit? I'm sorry? Does that mean Ke Jamie created it and Kevin took credit? I don't know. I actually was think it? this was Kevin's idea. Okay, all right. Because right. it requires him to reach out to people. So. Okay. okay, okay. So here's how this works. Famous questions are not questions that are well known. Okay. They are questions asked specifically of you from famous people. Okay. So I'm going to ask you this question. Okay. And then you have to A, see if you can guess who, who the, is, famous who the person asker is. Asked. And then B, you also have to answer the question. It's Rob Riggle. Okay. No, hold, hold, no pre guessing. Okay. Um, Tom Sizemore. The question is essentially. Okay. We have to narrow it down. Ask him if he's ever shit in a cat box. Oh my god! It is Rob Riggle. This. It's Rob Riggle. It, 
I'm not going to tell you unless oh, unless wow. you're prepared to make your. Do you want to tell the story first or guess it's who asked the question? It's a long story. It's a long story. Um, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. um, just one time. Just the once. I ha I'll try to make this as brief as possible. No, no, I, we we got plenty of time. I, I had I met this girl in L.A. This is years ago, and we kept trying to set up a date we never could and, and like like two or three times one of her both of us had to cancel mm -hmm. and it finally came down to like this is it if we don't if this is not going to happen and i had eaten something that was not sitting right earlier that day uh -huh. and i was like ready to cancel and i knew i can't so i go to pick her up at her place she had a tiny little apartment little one bedroom apartment that um the, like the bathroom's right there and the room's right here and there's a balcony right there mm -hmm. like the nowhere to go mm -mm. and the whole way there i'm like window down just letting it go mm -hmm. right and um wondering if i'm gonna make make it through the evening right and i get to her apartment and she goes into the one bathroom and is getting ready and it's happening so it's you know the options are yeah. remove her from her own bathroom right where she will be very aware of what's going on for a long time yep or sink was an option. Mm, right? Not a good one. Not a good um, one. The other option was on the balcony is a cat box. So I proceed to lay some serious pipe in this cat box. Oh my. And walk away and sit back down and pray that she's not, I don't know how she didn't smell it when she came out, but she came out and was like, okay, I'm ready to go. One thing real quick, let me empty. And I was like, what are they? No, I was like, what? no, you know what? We should, we should just go. She was yeah. like, no, let's just take a thing. I gotta, I gotta take it out, otherwise he'll eat it and stuff. And she opens up. She goes, oh my god! <laughs> oh my! <laughs> we didn't, we didn't see each other for very long. Oh. So you didn't bury it. I, I'm not a cat. I know, but like cats, but that's the thing. That's how you gave it away, though. But, but no, this was so. Then this is not her was, cat was not a mountain lion. Was her I reaction know, to that? Like, oh no, I have it. to take my cat to the vet. Yeah. It was like it was a moment of like, oh, sh something's wrong with my cat, or like you could see like trying to figure mm -hmm. it out. Like her first thought was, my cat is something's wrong with my cat. Of course, right? Uh, <laughs> and then then you could see her like trying to decide like, no, there's. No, that, it has to be the cat, but that cat wouldn't, you could, it was not good. Oh, wow. Why did you think that was a long story? <laughs> I feel like you're leaving well, no, out critical no, parts. No, this is, the, there, it goes, you know, there's much more to it, but no, that's, that's Did it go that's, on for years? Did you kept coming back kept, and sneaking on her balcony I would, I would and leaving climb, shit so she wouldn't think it was I you? I put a secret ladder on the yeah. outside of her balcony. I would climb up once every three weeks and. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, man. And Riggle. That was Rob Riggle. That was not Rob Riggle. The rest of it, the story is he told a long winding joke about shitting in a cat box but to ID it as if it was actually him, uh, which myself and soon everyone else at the table all called bullshit on, he had to come clean and admit he made it up. Well, it was a joke and we all had a lovely, nice laugh. Kevin Pollack. No. This would be one John Hamm. Johnny Ham to ah, Johnny Hammersticks. So I'm, I'm now just reading this for the first time. Is this a real story? No. You come to this house of chat show. And fill it with lies. That is, that is a friend of mine's story that I have commandeered and used at time, from time to time. Well, I'm so glad that I didn't read all of that until just now. <laughs> well done, John Ham. We got him to tell a ridiculous story. That's none of it's true. And none of it's true. That story was uh, sponsored by Contigo. Contigo. <laughs> or... John has a Contigo sponsorship. <laughs> the uh, the drink, okay. the uh, the cup company for sure. Well, thank you, John, for suggesting Thanks, that. Thanks, John. Thank you for telling that story. Sure. True or not, we all enjoyed the <laughs> hell out of it. Um, and uh, oh, you know that Richard <laughs> Kind really has the story of that, like mm -hmm. that yep. with Clooney. Yep. Where, oh boy. For months. For months, Clooney. Clooney. For those of you, I'm sure we told him on the show before, Clooney was taking Richard Kind's cat poop out of the litter box and leaving his own enormous human poop in no, there. No, 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 for months he cleaned it out. And oh, didn't, right, and there was and no poop. There was no That's poop. That's what it was. So Kind was terrified that something wrong was genuinely wrong with this cat. <laughs> took, kept taking it to the vet, and then finally one day he left a huge human <laughs> size. <laughs> oh my God! No, 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 the way he went, kitty! Kitty! <laughs> 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 That's fantastic. I love Richard Kind. Oh, so good. <laughs> yeah, thanks so for good. thanks for that memory, John. Mm. 
Um, okay, so a gentleman on uh, the Twitter who goes by at Saint Saucy, or perhaps his name is Chris Goodnight, I don't know. He asked I'll, like I'll, six, I, pr I prefer to call him Saint Saucy. Saint Saucy. Saint, Saint Saucy. Saint Saucy. Saint. Saint Saucy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Saint Saucy. When I said you were going to be on, asked mm -hmm. uh, about six questions. Okay. Only one of them made sense. Okay. Uh, Let's ask the other five. You believe me, you don't want me to. They are not even full sentences. Okay. I don't okay. think he knows how Twitter works. What actors do you routinely see in auditions? Who do you go up against the most? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, uh, who do I see? Uh, James Spader. He's always Boy, in the room. A, that was, always that, in the room. Always in the room with me. And no. Um, well, you have been you know, mistaken for him. Older, no, I'm just kidding. I, I've signed his autograph, though. In Antonio's Pizzeria on Ventura, if you want to go see it, folks. Wow. That's impressive. We it's still there. The last time I heard. Um, no, um, you, you know James who, Spader like in 1987. I had a, I had a girlfriend in college who knew I was going to move to LA and or knew I wanted to be an actor. Knew I had done some film over the summer, and then we broke up. It was a short-lived thing. She wasn't the brightest bulb, and she came back to me like a year later. She goes, "I saw your movie. It was amazing." And I go, "Which one?" And she goes, "What's the one with the star Stargate? I saw Stargate." And I'm like. Because we had the same hair at the time, and I did wear glasses at the time. She goes, I said, that's not, that's James Spader. Yeah. No, that's not. Anyway. Um, you know who I expect to see more and I don't is Matt Lesher. Oh. Because we're in the same theater company. I've understudied for Matt and gone yeah. on for him in theater. We've done a play together. And just, just in this last pilot season did I see him in the room repeatedly. But that's someone we, I assume to see more often. Mm -hmm. um, who else? I, I'm, I'm sure I'm not. I'm, I'm sure there are others that I'm not thinking of. Them, no, that's yeah. the first one that comes to mind. Okay, Matt, who, that's, a, that's a good one. Well, Saint Saucy, I hope you enjoy. What it. I will say, what I love about this point in my career is, at this point, by the time you get down to like the last four or three, Mosley's one. Michael mm -hmm. Mosley is one. Mm -hmm. um, by this point, you, it's I know them all. Like we all know each other. That are trying to get the jobs, and we're always excited for the other one to get the job. I'm because because I at this point I understand like I I'm going to do my version. You're going to do your slight different version. You're going to do version whatever one helps the soup. Whatever yeah. spice you need for the soup, that's the one they're going to pick. The, the it's most, not personal anymore. No, between the actors. Yeah, as opposed to the call, cattle call commercial casting. Right. That was people yeah. trying to undermine each other. Exactly. No, I have the same thing, and I always see the same five guys at every network test for every pilot. And last year. I was at one and I saw an old friend and uh, it was down to the two of us and I knew he'd just gotten married and his wife was pregnant and I was like, honestly... Did you throw it? Did you throw it? No, I didn't throw it, but I was like, this is the least upset I've ever been right. about not getting it. No, it's still upsetting when you don't get the part. Sure. I, yeah, yeah, but... No, I'm not a saint, not... but I was like, this is my... I'm perfectly fine with his outcome because yeah. he needs it. That's yeah. fine. Um, so I'm going to put this off. And you hate off, kids. So. And I hate children <laughs> and married people and working. And uh, I, I'm, we are definitely going to start talking about Mad Men now. Sure, anytime. I've made the people wait long enough. Okay. But we're going to start it uh -huh. with another famous question okay. that has just Good. come in. Okay. This is a very popular live stream today, my friends. Wow, wow. That's very cool. There are people watching I didn't even know. <laughs> and so this has just been texted to me to okay. ask you. Okay. Famous question. <clears throat> Once you knew the show was ending, did you keep an item from the Mad Men set? Is this from Matt Miller? I mean, uh, uh, Matt Miller. Is this from Matthew Weiner? Uh, if you're ready to guess who it was, perhaps you should answer the question first. I feel like I need to know who I asked before I... I will, I will put you at ease. The person asking <clears throat> was not connected to okay. the show. Okay, okay. Um, I kept one thing. It was not a set piece. Okay. Uh, I still have it. And I, the irony is I kept it by accident. Ooh. So wardrobe? It was in, in my wardrobe, mm -hmm. and then when I got, and I found it in my wardrobe, I thought, oh, they're not gonna use this, I'll keep it. And it is the plane ticket that Peggy hands me. And it is, it is the, not Peggy, uh, the plane ticket that, Maur that Maureen hands me, and then I go see Peggy and say, I'm going. Um, well, I'll talk, that's a great scene to talk about too, by the way. Uh, but that, the detail on that show, if they handed you a file for Hershey, mm -hmm. it was a file on Hershey. Yep. There was no page in that there was not a file on Hershey. Yeah. When they handed me that plane ticket, Maureen hands it to me. I say thank you and I put it in my jacket pocket. That's the only time you see it on camera. Mm -hmm. You open it up, it has a carbon copy. It has JFK to LAX or Newark or whatever the airport it was at the time. And then it says, you know, the flight and date number. And I guarantee if you look up flight and date numbers on that day, that that'll be real. one of the flights. Sure. 
It wow. was that kind of detail. And it's, I have it in a book. We have the Mad Men yearbook. Yeah. We all took pictures like we were in high school. And they had the drama club and, the, and we, made, we voted for best dressed and most likely to whatever. And we have the Mad Men yearbook and it's in my Mad Men yearbook. Oh, that's phenomenal. <coughs> That is phenomenal. Okay, that question was asked of uh, the president of AMC, and you're now in a lot of trouble. Uh, Charlie, no, I'm that sorry. <laughs> that question came from Chat Show himself, Kevin Pollack. Kevin! Uh, who is watching and presumably enjoying. I almost, I, I, I kind of wanted to take the big propeller, the wooden <laughs> propeller, but I didn't know how to get that in my truck without them saying. That was a tough thing to walk off set with and pretend like nothing was happening. Uh, Kevin is saying, now that we know you didn't actually poop in a cat box, how can we believe this? And that's a solid point, Kevin. I can, I can tell, I'll Twitter it, I'll take a photo of it when I get home tonight and I will Twitter it. Uh, you could have enough time to make one up between now and then, I don't buy it. Okay, I will show it to you in person. I would, I would love it if I'll you tweeted you. that. And I, I can think of at least one other person, at least one who would appreciate if you would tweet something like that. AMC legal? That's exactly correct. <laughs> I feel like at this point, they're, they'd be okay with it. <laughs> They've got to be okay with it. Um, so I, I mean, so you played Ted Shaw. That was 30, yeah. 33. That was another one of those guest star, guest stars. maybe three episodes. Exactly. Guest star, three episodes. And yeah. with Matt Weiner and that show, I mean, unlike anything else, talk about the secrecy. And there were a lot of people I recognized in that rating room. Yeah. And there were 30 guys auditioning for Ted Shaw that day, and I recognized all of them. Oof. And we were all very different. Yeah. There were all different shapes and sizes and types in that room. And so I went in there going, and you get your audition for Ted Shaw. They've changed all the, it was the scene, one of my audition scenes was the scene in the Benihana, right? That was one of my audition scenes. But they had changed all the names of the characters. And that scene's not in a conference room where you can tell that's Don Draper, that's okay. so-and-so, that you can tell, you can hear, it, that's Peggy, that's, um, I had no idea who anyone was. I assumed it was Ham, but it could have been any of the other guys. Yeah. I just knew, and so, like the work was twice as much on it than any other audition, because you're trying to figure out what the hell's going on. It's kind of this middle section of nothing. And I just did my take on it and made my choices, and I was evidently right. Yeah. I was correct, and I fit the, the I, I, I added the spice to the soup that he needed that day. <laughs> that is fantastic. And then you were on it through the very end. Yeah. Through the made very it, end, you were. The end. Yeah, and that's, uh, uh, my God, uh, Jamie, I know, uh, you would be better at this than I, so if you want to talk about any Mad Men specific things. Okay, so, were you a fan of the show going in for the audition? I wasn't a fan of the show when it first came out. Neither um, was I, I got on to like season, like, I watched season, I started watching live season three. Yeah, my manager told me to watch it uh, like season two, and I was like, I, I just didn't want to believe the hype, mm -hmm. and, um, I, and so I went and watched like one episode middle of season two, and I was like, what the fuck is this? This is also, lame. You no, and you also have no context. <laughs> I know, yeah, exactly. Well, that's why. Yeah. I was like, this is the worst. This is just, this is slow See, and See, and that's and interesting ridiculous. because I think that it has one of the best pilots ever. Well, no, I didn't watch the pilot yet. I know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So that's interesting that you just chose a random one. I, well, I, I just think was, you I had to watch hooked. the next... If you watched the pilot, I bet you would have been hooked. If, if I had just started with the pilot. Yeah. I just thought, I thought, well, I'll just watch an episode until I watch it. And I was like, yeah. this is ridiculous. And I went back and she goes, watch the first three. Mm -hmm. And I watched the first eight mm -hmm. that day. Like I, I, my, my wife was in training in Redlands and I, I was out there with nothing to do and I, I bought the first season and watched all of it. I mean, I was just, and I could not get enough until I caught up. Um, so I'd become a fan. So by the time I auditioned, I, I was a fan, Excellent. yes. Um, I love, your character's one of my favorite characters ever. I love your relationship with Peggy. And do you like the way that the, their relationship progressed? Like, I did. I did yes. like the way their relationship progressed. I, I was very sad when I read the episode that I was moving to California. Mm -hmm. Not, I, I felt like that was, I, I, loved the, I loved the whole character arc of those characters and I loved what happened and I love how it ended. As an actor, I was sad that I knew that I wasn't gonna have as much to do on camera with Elizabeth <laughs> Moss. Yeah, she's fantastic. I was disappointed in that, but I wasn't. You know, I do. I do like the way. It, I do like the way they played it out. I love that because I think it explores that. Like everyone always talks about, like having like their work crush, and you're like their work husband or wife, and then. But it like realistically, like it's not going to work out. No, there, you know? there. I, I always believed that their relationship was their love for each other was about work. Yes. And it became something else. And also, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, 
then he kind of like Ted's character like didn't really really wasn't in it for the work he didn't like the work he liked the money but he didn't really like like he wasn't really into his, I, that's how I took it or from what I remember no he got to the point where, where he wasn't, it he just became like, a job right but early on and I think that was back he, what it, but that was whenever he once he moved to LA yeah yes. LA crushed him yes mm -hmm. LA crushed him that's why that's why I love my one of my last scenes is the scene where, where uh, Ham and I are in the uh, conference room uh, making those boards for the pitch to keep the keep the company, you know, mm -hmm. to McCann Erickson to keep it separate. And um, I, t I tell him, I said, look, I can't go. I'm not moving back to California. Mm -hmm. Like I found someone, I really like them. I'm staying, I'm happy again. Like, you know, he'd come full circle again. California crushed him, just destroyed him. Yeah. That's what, one, of, one of my favorite lines. Uh, what is it? He's a, uh, just cash the checks, Pete. Just cash the check. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the exact phrasing, but it's, you know, he's, Pete's freaking out. I'm like, yeah. just cash the check. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is yeah, because Pete, yeah, Pete hated it. Oh, Pete hated Pete, being in LA. Yeah. Oh. So here's a Any, question. Since yeah. a lot of the shooting on the show is phone calls, yeah. especially once a character's in LA, a character's in New York, <laughs> yeah. and I have read time and time again that there were no slouches. And so anytime there was a phone call scene, even if the actor was not gonna be on camera that day at all, yes. they were in the room, everyone or on showed, the other side of the room. Everyone door. showed up. Everyone showed up. Yeah. And uh, I mean, there, might, there might have been like a rare exception sure. where someone had, you know, but 99% but of the time, yeah. it was on, you were on the call sheet. Yeah. You were expected to be there. That's and you wanted to be there. That was course. one of those shows, that was the only show I've ever been on where people came early and stayed late. Mm -hmm. People came on their days off. Wow. Our base camp was the most amazing thing. It'll, I, I would love to reproduce it, but it had to do with the people. They, we had this wood deck with a cover with heat lamps in the winter, and um, we had a table, this really long uh, table, where we had dominoes and cribbage, and we played Heads Up, the game Heads Up. And, oh, sure. and, we, we would, and no one went to their trailers. Mm -mm. We sat at that table, and we would rush to get back to the game we were playing. <laughs> <laughs> we finish a scene and everyone would run back to the table to finish our <laughs> dominoes game. Yeah. That's fantastic. We had a week long cribbage marathon for points and money. Wow. Yeah. It was like, we just had fun. People would come, uh, people would come on their days off. They'd just come by set and hang out. That is true. We, uh, we, Kevin and I were fortunate enough to visit the set a couple of times and it was like if people weren't shooting that day, they were just hanging out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It was it, I, maybe I kept something from the set. What did you What did you keep? Uh oh. Nah, it was given to me. It was just um, Harry Crane's business card. That's awesome. He gave me a business card. That wasn't that big good. of a deal. But you're correct though that they do. It's every de like I remember like there was a mail cart, <laughs> and every address was yep, handwritten and yep. correct. And I just and like there were cigarettes in ashtrays with like lipstick stains on yep. them. Everything and to like who's seeing that? I yeah. it's amazing. They would they would yeah. It was I, amazing. I only got to visit the set the one time, and in the main uh, office they were changing the backdrop that you would see out the window. And I remember we asked. They said, "Oh, is there? Are you changing it to a night?" And they said, "No." Um, this next episode takes place this week of April in 1967. And if you were in Madison Avenue looking, uh, you know, south, out, that's what you would have seen. And you're like, that's the detail. The attention to detail, the detail. is unbelievable. <laughs> it is. And uh, I'm sure, I'm sure at some point drove some people crazy. They're mm -hmm. like, no, Matt didn't, he was like, this is, I, this is what I want. Yeah. But then everyone brought their game because of that. Everyone yeah. like wanted to do their best work. And boy, did they. Mm. Oof. And John's a big, you know, having someone like John as number one on the call sheet really makes a big difference too. Because you can have the creator want that kind of detail. And if number one doesn't come prepared and come on time and, and you know, mm -hmm. be there and, you know, John was, was an amazing number one. Yeah. Yeah, a good guy. And a, and a good guy annoying. to annoying. He's so annoying. He's such an Talented, asshole too. Yeah. God Talented damn it. Handsome. It's, it's, yeah. his stupid face. <laughs> Fuck John. I always say, if aliens came face. down, if aliens came down and was like, take us to your most perfect human specimen, I'm like, all right, let's go find John Ham. Let's go find him. Okay, he's up there. <laughs> you know what though? They'd be on their way and then Aaron Eckhart would be like, whoa, oh, where are you guys going? Oh, hey. <laughs> Second Aaron Eckhart call. <laughs> Nice. Uh, <laughs> Next week on the Aaron Eckhart Show. So, um, how nervous did you and the rest of the cast get every time the new scripts would come out? Because Mad Men, in spite of being a business show, a lot of death, had a lot of death. Um, 
I, the first, the first year I was on it, I knew ahead of, I didn't get the whole script, A. Right. And, oh, and yeah. I didn't get until, I had to go, so before you're a regular on the show, if you wanted to read the whole script other than your scenes before the table read, mm -hmm. you had to go check out a script an hour before the table read and sit there and read it in front of someone. And Matt would give this great speech before every table read. He'd say, okay, welcome. Now you're a member of the, you know, you're part of the family. Do not tweet. Do not Instagram. Do not tell your mom. Do not tell them what year it is. Do not tell them what scenes you're in. Do not tell them who you're working with. Where, you know, do not post anything because we do have time to reshoot it without you. Welcome. <laughs> every time. Every time. And it's interesting because at the final read, he gives that speech and I think, Okay, so there's a year and a half is gonna pass between this table read and the time it airs. At least, a year, like, it was like a year and yeah. four, a year and five months. And I'm like, how is he gonna, like at a certain point, a certain point in that process, when we shut this thing down, they're not gonna, you know, this is a lot of people in this room to know how this show ends. Yeah. Right, and we were doing press, and I was with Lizzie, and this is toward the end, we're doing press, uh, as they're gonna air the last eight or whatever. and. Um, I turned to Lizzie in the press and I'm like, you know, there's a lot of people in that room. She goes, oh, that's not how it ends. And I'm like, what? She goes, oh, after the table read, Matt took the, you know, the original five up to his room and said, okay, here's how it really ends. And so, which gave me relief because now I don't know. Mm -hmm. I genuinely don't know. I don't have to lie anymore. I don't know. Wow. And I don't know if it's the last page, the last yeah. five pages, the last half, because I wasn't in the last script. I had already, you know, my oh, character was yeah. gone. So I got to go to the table read and I, was, I would show up every once in a while and try to steal things. But, um, <laughs> uh, but I, I didn't know how to, and it turned out it was exactly the same, right. except for the Coke commercial. <laughs> <laughs> but for a year, I thought, oh, I, or six months, I thought, oh, I don't know how it ends. I honestly don't know. I don't, they all could die in a plane crash. I don't yeah. know. Turns That's out they were. But if she made that up just to give you that, seriously, to give you that sense of relief. No, because he really did take yeah. them into the room. Yeah. She meant how it, th that it end just ended. Because mm -hmm. that is how it ended, but the ending wasn't that. The ending was the Coke commercial. Yeah. The ding, and then cut sure. to the Coke mm -hmm. commercial. Well, so spoiler that, that alert, if you story. haven't seen the very ending of Mad Men. Yeah, if it's, yeah you know what? He wrote the you. Coke ad, people. You. He wrote the Coke late. ad. I, I was talking to my mother on the, <laughs> on the ride here, and, I, and I've been begging them to watch Mad Men for years. Oh, we'll see it, we'll see it. And I went, well, if you watch the interview today, we're probably going to ruin it. Ruin so. a couple of things. Yeah. Now, if you go back and watch the very last episode, Look at the girl who is the, uh, uh, at the, oh, what's it, the hostess girl yeah. at, yes. the, at the uh, thing. She's with the braids. With the braids that yes. are just like the girl in the Komodo commercial. It, there's mm -hmm. tons of people yes. dressed like the people from the Coke yes. commercial in mm -hmm. that area, in that compound. Ah. Yep. Oh no, the internet was, they a were blaze. on top of They were that. ablaze. <laughs> when that episode so that's not new information? You know, not to me and Jamie, but probably to at least well, one or two also, people watching. Well, also, as I mentioned to you when we first met, um, right before the show started, is I was a co-host of a Mad Men recap podcast. Oh, of course, so we I, know. I, 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 I forgot that. <laughs> so you, <laughs> you've, been, you've gone deep. You've gone deep yeah. onto this. Mm -hmm. Here's one of my favorite facts about you and these Mad Men table reads. Okay. So, in uh, one of your early episodes, you prank. Don Draper, Ted yes. Price, Don Draper, yes. as he, he's calling <laughs> as Robert Kennedy. Yes. And you did not see this in the script until I was still a guest. one hour prior to the table read. Yes. And you're like, oh, they want me to do a Robert Kennedy impression. Someone actually, I was, I was working the day of the table read. Yeah. On the previous episode. And I, I don't even know if I knew I was in the next episode mm -hmm. yet. And someone walked up to me and goes, by the way, can you do a Kennedy impersonation? And I went, why? And they said, because in the next episode, you're supposed to, and I'm like, what? And so I hadn't seen the script yet. I, and I, because I was working and the, and the table read was at lunch, I didn't have time to go check out the script and read it. Yeah. And I wasn't confident enough yet to go to the ward, to go scripty and, or go to wardrobe and say, can I borrow your script to read it? Right. And they probably would have said no. Um, but so I went online looking for Kennedy clips. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I could really find was The Simpsons. <laughs> so I used, yeah, I was doing a version of The Simpsons <laughs> for the table read. And then I went and did more research later. But the day of the table read, yeah. it was me doing The Simpsons. I'm going to need you of, to, to give me a raw. <laughs> mean, that's, all, that's all you need. Say and the chowder. Brilliant, say chowder. Oh, say chowder. <laughs> Ara, chowder. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the genius of the writing on that show was it would be written air ellipses. Uh, it was written oh, that way. It was Era. written. 
<laughs> Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> Calling to congratulate you. <laughs> it's <fucking> phenomenal. <laughs> Jesus. So much fun. So good. Um, uh, as, as, here's a fan question, I mm -hmm. guess. Um, as, as someone who is happily married, mm -hmm. how interesting, nice, weird, I don't know, was it for you that Ted's character is, for better or worse, the only character who starts to go down the infidelity road and then says, you know what, can't do it. Um, no, else. please add to that. He didn't come from a bad place. Like he was genuinely in love with her. It's not like he just like wanted to bang her. Yeah. Right. So like it came from like a like he genuinely had affection for Peggy. Yeah. I, I w um, we were, we were already married. We got married during the show, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it did, as a married person, that doesn't. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think. Right. I don't I, think I of it in, that, maybe in those as, terms. As an actor, and I thought. I thought what I loved about Teddy was he's so different than everyone else. Right. He was the only one who wasn't looking to bang. He wasn't the only one who wasn't an uh, raging alcoholic. He wasn't an alcoholic. He didn't drink mm -hmm. practically, except for his old his, uh, his old Spanish. Is that the name of the drink? The old Spanish. <laughs> this is a that's good trivia. The old Spanish. Yeah. It's a drink I order. That was a refer. It was a reference to Tina Fey, and um, what was her show? The her genius. Thirty, 30 Rock. Rock. It was a reference to Thirty Rock. Mm. I order an Old Spanish, mm. which is horrible. It's like wine and um, and like uh, it's wine and something and pick and like uh, uh, olive juice. Oh, it's horrible. It's an awful drink. <laughs> um, but it was it was it was them doing jokes. Matt Weiner and Tina Fey doing jokes back to each other when Aww. I ordered an Old Spanish. Um, so I didn't really think of it in terms of, I just thought it was interesting that he was different. Yeah. And um, I will, this is a cool thing. I my, was really, yeah, and I, I, he genuinely was one of my favorite characters and he came in unlikable because he mm -hmm. was, you know, like he was always like. That's interesting to me because I, I, people would be like, I hate him, I'm like, why? And it, you, you didn't like him because he was, he was the other team. Right, he was right. the other team, that's how he was introduced. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But he's, and in pranking, you know, we're just saying like pranking Don and like, yeah. Because, because you want, you root because you root for Don, for, right? right? And so the, once he became on the team, he's not the bad guy anymore, mm -hmm. but he never changed. Right. No. He was the same guy all the way through. I just found it very interesting that people didn't, didn't like him so much. Yeah, because now that you say that, like, you know, I look back, it's like he just was always like genuinely a team player. His team just changed. Yeah. See, that's your cheerleading skills coming in. <laughs> See? That's a callback. Nice right button. There. That's a callback. That's a right solid there. button. Uh, See, if we talk about stuff I like, I engage. <laughs> 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 I just like very few things. Mm -hmm. That's why I saved it till towards the end. So yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't, wouldn't lose your interest after the first yeah. 20 minutes. <laughs> um, uh, well, unless there is any more Mad Men to cover, I'm mm -hmm. dying to talk about Bates Motel. Please, go Are we ahead. good on? Are you good? We have some fans in the chat room, too, that really want you to talk about Bates Motel, so please. Okay. I, I'm I've a step ahead of you, fans. Okay. I can get my Mad Men time in after we... We can, we can talk. We can talk. I'll give you my time. So, once again, we're not testing. I did not test for that one. Nope. We're did just not. getting brought into the fold. I just I, I got Come on in. in. Come season on in. three. Come on and do a season. We're two years in. <laughs> get in here. Help us out with this thing. Yes. So you play Bob Paris. Bob Paris. I loved Bob. Uh, yeah, that's the first. He, I mean, this guy is wealthy beyond compare, oh, and yeah. and just how how maybe the best character introduction of my career. Yeah, uh, Norma Bates is walking around. She's at this party she's not supposed to be at. Little eyes wide shutty. Mm -hmm. um, well, a normal party at the house. And then she finds this other little guest house that's more bigger than most houses, right. and looks in the window. And there is what's in the script is supposed to be like an orgy happening in the middle. Yeah. And then she looks over. And I'm sitting in a really high back chair in a tuxedo, holding a highball, with a girl on either side of me in like Playboy bunny outfits. <laughs> that's how you. That, that's that's your introduction to yep. Bob Paris. Yep. I feel like you know exactly who that guy is at that time. Yep. That pretty much does spill it all out right there. Yeah. Um, and uh, and you did. So you did all uh, of the episodes. I think it was all the episodes, or almost all the episodes all of, them, yeah. of season three. Yeah. But then you came back, right? For one. I did, so yeah, so uh, Carrie Aaron and I did a pilot, Carrie Aaron's the creator of the mm -hmm. show, and excuse me, I did a pilot that she had written, that she, that another friend of ours had written, um, Nikki Toscano had written, and, and Carrie was the helping her on the pilot. So anyway, that's how I know Carrie. And she wrote this part and wanted me to do it, and my daughter had just been born. And I wasn't gonna do anything for like six, eight months. Sure. And I'm in Sacramento, and, my, and they, she calls me and says, please come do this, here's the, here's the story arc, and you're, I guarantee you it's gonna be like, 
two days at a time. You're gonna come in for like two or three days and we're gonna fly you home. I was like, that sounds perfect. Then she told me the story arc and I was like, oh. oh. Um, and uh, so, I, yeah, I, I, so I, I get done, I finish the season mm -hmm. and I, I'm sure I'm not spoiling it at this point, right? Uh, no, I think it's a couple years in. Right, uh, so I die. It looks like I die. Mm -hmm. The boat goes, uh, you see me get it very, that was the middle of the hardest days of work I've ever had to do in my life. Oh yeah? Oh, freezing cold water in Vancouver. I was in water oh. in Vancouver, pouring water on me, what eyes night? open, look dead. Oh, like November. Oh. It's, 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 you know, it's like what is it, December, January. I mean, it was like, it was winter. It doesn't it was matter. winter. As long as it's not August, it's terrible. It was winter. Yeah. And I, like, paint, like do the makeup for dead, lay in the water, and then ice cold water, don't move your eyes, stay, you know. Ooh. Hardest work I've ever had to do. But then. But then. Not dead. No, I was dead. No, he's dead. I was dead. I'm, I, I was, was trying dead. for I the might, fans. Oh, I might. I, well, you don't know. I come back. I'm, I'm in the first episode of the next season. <laughs> I screwed up. That was, you did what you did was genius. And I was like, no, I died. No, I died, Sam. Ah, that's all right. But they, they called me back to, to do one shot. Yeah. To do the tough shot, which was the, actually going into the water. <laughs> like, you see me get shot at the yeah. end of the season. And then they had me come back to put on dead makeup. I flew to Vancouver, stayed at the Slutton place, uh, saw Aaron Eckhart with some hot girl, yeah. and then, <laughs> um, uh, and then get dead dead makeup, put on a yep. wetsuit, put on my clothes, Ooh. and then lay down as they pour water on me in a boat. And then I took it off and flew home. Glamorous, very glamorous, my work. Glamorous life we have. <laughs> um, oh, that's fantastic. Uh, you were great on that show. I uh, my my ex is a big fan, and so she turned me on to it. And it it's, was, uh, it's a real it's a really, it's really, a really cool underrated show. show. At Vera Farmiga is one of the best actresses out there. Yeah, my, on television and then out there, I think. Yeah, I had several moments, and Elizabeth Moss was the same way. Several moments in scenes with her, where the coverage is on me, mm -hmm. and I'm going, "Holy shit, that's good." She's not on camera, and I'm going. Right. Wow, that was interesting. Or that was I. You didn't do that before. Yeah. So good, so present, uh, generous. Mm -hmm. I've been really lucky in my career with those with uh, you know those kind of scene partners. Starting with Jeffrey Tambor. Ah, yeah. got First a good one. Tambor story. Hey now. Um, <laughs> uh, he was he Tambor. I, I just he really took me under his wing. I was so. Green that for my that first big job of mine with him, um, no, not really. Okay, he was just really sweet to me. Yes, he pulled me aside. And he goes, he goes, hey, hey, stop trying to be funny. Just talk to me. Talk to me. Ooh. We're doing a sitcom. Yeah. He goes, hey, stop trying to be funny. Don't worry about what the intent of the joke was. Just let's. He was. I, That's a good story. Years, years above where I was capable of yeah. understanding at the time as an actor. But yeah. No, good he's guy. he's he's one of my all-time favorites. Right, he's just so he can good. do no wrong. So in my good. Eyes. He's yeah. so he's so uh, relaxed on set too. Yeah, when he's when he's at, he's so relaxed as an actor. It's kind of a crime he didn't win an Emmy for every single year he was on Larry Sanders' show. Uh, I don't think people understood. They didn't get what that was, and it's and how difficult it was what he was doing. That's the most impossible job in acting, is to be the heel. But to, for people to understand why and to make him human make still. Him hum to make him and, human. And not to make, make him, not him a caricature. this two-dimensional character. Yeah. He, that is some of the best acting, I think, in television. Unbelievable. What he did on that show. Yeah, if you haven't, if somehow you've never seen the Larry Sanders oh. show. You know, I had not seen all of them. And then when I was doing the trip to Vancouver, I bought like the first five seasons and I would mm -hmm. watch it on the plane. Yeah. And I just was like, holy shit. So geez, good. So good. So good. The writing on that show yeah. was sensational. Um, so, Jeffrey Tambor, we love you. We love you, Jeffrey. We Come do the show. All the Emmys. Yeah, we got to make that happen. That's a 2017 resolution. Jeffrey Tambor Jeffrey on the Tambor. chat show. That's what I say. Um, I want to ask about Madam Secretary. So do a lot of other people. Okay. They're dying to know, are we ever going to see Mike B? Mike Barno, is he coming back? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I know. I figured. I wish I, wish I did. I know, that, I know that I've been asked to come back. Right. I, I did one this season that has already aired. Um, uh, if you haven't seen it, it's a really, really funny moment with B.B. Newworth. Um, I have not seen couple, it. A couple. Watch the episode. It's really funny. It's okay. cute. Um, I, I love that show. I love that character. Yeah. I love Mike B. So much fun. I mean, talk about fun. You walk in and you immediately have all the status in the world. It's pretty even nice. Though, even over Taya. Yeah. I have the status. And another, <laughs> give her credit, my very first episode, there's a scene where... 
they, they and they don't know who this. They call him the Hatchet Man, and he's going to fire everyone, and they're all nervous. But you know, as an actor, to you can't take status. You have to be given status, right? right. So you can't act status. You can just have it or not have it. Mm -hmm. And one of the first scenes of the show, I've never met Taya. I'm new. I'm brought in to play this role, and she turns to. Uh, I think I think Stoltz was directing that one. She turned to Stoltz and said, "Has anyone, has anyone ever sat in my office chair?" And we went, no. He goes, I want Kevin to be sitting in the chair when they walk in. That's just smart mm. storytelling. Yeah. Right? Coming from, and that doesn't, always, doesn't often come from number one. Sometimes it'll come from a director and the number one will argue that. Sure. Point because it's their chair. But to her credit, yeah. Wow, that's great. That's fun. It's a fun it, one. If that's shot in LA, I would do it a lot more. I get there in New York? It's New York. Ah. From Sacramento, it's two planes and if I'm gone for nine days. and I, yeah. you know, it's, just, it's tough. It's it tough. is tough. It's it tough. is tough. And also, if they paid me a lot more, I'd probably do it. Sure. No, that even, changes even, the equation. Even, even in New York. It's not, uh, it's, it's not that glam. I tell you, if you be a regular on a series, that's when you've made it. Guest starring, you're, it's, tough. You, it's, not, it's not as easy yeah. as you think. But speaking of regular yes. on a series. Yes. Let's get to it. I want to I close out on what's going on with you these days. I am currently trying to get my handicap down. Okay. To, uh, <laughs> no. A lethal weapon. Captain Brooks Avery. Uh, back to cheerleading. Oh. Uh, Jonathan Fernandez, who plays Scorsese on the show, uh -huh. was a cheerleader at Penn State. Whoa. And that's where he met his wife. Are you sure that was so not the state the... pen? Thanks, Dad, for making oh. that joke always come into my brain. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, he, I'm pretty sure it was Penn State, but he was the real yeah. deal. Like, and they still do. I mean, she's a little bitty. He's a very strong guy. He, they mm -hmm. still do stunts. Wow. Yeah. So he was a real deal. So anyway, Lethal Weapon, yes. Lethal Weapon. Yeah. Uh, so how, how many guys have you, have you shot now? Are you? We are on 14, about to start 15. Okay. Of 18. Very nice. And I think eight have aired. Eight-ish. Yeah. I th I Seven think or eight-ish yeah. have aired. Um, so my question is, how much, if at all, are you channeling uh, Steve Kahn, who played, of course, Captain Ed... Murphy in the. Uh, we wear the same undershirt, and that's it. That's it. That's it. There's no channeling. No, no other channeling. Yeah, it is. Uh, I wanted to pick one thing. Yep. From that character. Yep. That my character I didn't think would normally do. Mm hmm. And I picked the tank. White tank. Well done. He wears a white tank, and that's it. Well done. <laughs> I got a wink. Those of us listening. Those of you listening and not watching the show <laughs> will never know. I got a wink. Well, now, now they know. They do. Because you told them. Well, maybe I'm making it up. <laughs> this show is full of lies. Um, uh, this theater is becoming a house of lies. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when, was this a, an audition test situation? This was an audition test situation. The yeah. hard way. Yeah, the hard way. Wow. Yeah, a yeah. rarity for you. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, and, and this, is, this is the first time, well, yeah, this is the first time in my career that I booked a pilot. Mm-hmm that got picked up and got a full season. Yep. Now, I, I did one, I've gotten, I've done other pilots that never got picked up, and I've yeah. done a pilot that got picked up for like four. Weird. Was it the original that Seinfeld? Was every, that was everything. Yes, it was the original <laughs> Seinfeld. It was, it was me, Matt Lesher, and uh, B.B. Newworth was the three of us. She was my Elaine. They, there was an age difference. Weird. It's uh, a shame that show didn't go long. I know. That could have been some money, mm. but this is the first. This is the first time that uh, I, I start start started from the beginning from the hard way. From the hard and way, and so far so yeah. good, man. So far so good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I this show is not a typical network show, in no. my opinion. It is so full of action. Yes, I don't know how they do it. Every high week. production value. Yes, it is really. There is some kind of car chase or blow up or jumping off a building every, every week. episode. Every week. Yeah. Now, if Clayne can continue to jump off buildings for mm -hmm. five or six years, I God, please Clayne, <laughs> stay healthy, Clayne. Um, I will tell you this: when I saw the first poster or maybe TV spot for the show months and months before it aired. Yeah. And I and this is how my brain Please. works. My brain went. Damon Wayans Jr. is just going by Damon Wayans now. <laughs> and then I got a better look at it, and then a couple things all happened in my brain at once. I went first. How young does Damon Wayans look? Damon Wayans has looked the same since Beverly Hills Cop. I was going to say Last Boy Scout, but okay. Even further, even I think he, he's I think even looked before. the same for over thirty years. Yes, yes. Black don't crack. That one don't. 
I've never seen anything like that. He is ageless. Unless there's crack involved, and then sometimes. Then, then there but will no, be. No, but crack. he's clean no, that way. So he is unbelievable uh, how young looking he still is. And yet he plays cranky old veteran. Yes. Perfectly. He's so he's so well cast in the role. It's perfect. He's a grandfather now. It's and unbelievable. He's me. he's like you know he, he wants to go home early. Yeah. No, he's you know he also wants to be the guy he was, but he's he's an older sure. guy. He's getting older. Um, He's, still, he's a lot cooler than Murtaugh in real life. <laughs> Come on. It's Damon Wayans. Right. No. Um, but uh, he's so well cast and Clayne's so well cast. Yeah. And that's the show. That's, it is. I mean, without that, right. well, you, that is not the show. But without that, there is no show. Sure. Right? And they were very lucky to find those guys. Yeah. And then, I don't know, I, you know with Tim Trella and the stuff that's our, our stunt guy, what they do every week. Yeah. I've only got to go out twice into the field. Um. It's so much fun. And that's, yeah. And I was like, but this is the perfect amount. I don't want to do it every week. Nope. Less golf that way. Yep. A lot more work. I get paid the same. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with, you know, I'm okay with once every four episodes I'll go in the field. <laughs> put, on a, put on a vest and pull a gun once every four, four or five episodes. So with uh, you in the field and maybe others in the field when you weren't there and these giant sequences, yeah. which are really big sequences Huge. if you're not watching this. It's amazing. Have there been any disasters or near disasters? I know that, uh, I'm going to forget his name now, I'm sorry, but uh, one of Clayne's stunt doubles cracked a rib or two Ooh. falling off a truck. Um, there have been some. There have been some. Right. Mi- there have been some minor injuries, right. and that, I think that was the worst one. Okay, good. Um, and let me uh, uh, help the viewers and, and listeners at home. You should know that uh, the Screen Actors Guild takes good care of their stunt performers. They do. And they do. while it is unfortunate to crack ribs, I guarantee you, he was cared for wonderfully afterward. They, yes, they. they um, it's it's a tough. They, those that, those guys are working their butts off. Yeah, right? they those really stunt are. performers are no joke. No. And 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 Klein does a lot of stuff. I mean, he, he does he he does a lot. Yeah, no, he's a, he seems like a tough guy in he's, real life. Yeah, he's he's no joke. No, he seems like the kind of guy who'd be like, "You guys want to get a rugby match going at lunch?" Or or you want to go just go find a go find a fight? <laughs> <laughs> no one has a rugby. Well, let's just fight. Yeah, cool. He's a oh, good guy. Wow, real Fight Club guy. Um, so, uh, oh, not I mean, he's, he's married with kids now. I'm sure. He, I'm sure he doesn't fight anymore. Mm, maybe. Not Another gonna say wink. whether or not there's winking Another going wink. on. Another wink. Going Another on around week. these parts. Um, well, I, uh, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying the show. And Thank I, you. Uh, I, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I know Fox is playing all their moves close to the vest, those weirdos. Yeah, they're, they're, they're weird. I, 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 look, I, the numbers are good. Mm-hmm. We're not breaking any records, but they're solid. And I think, I think people will be surprised by the show. I mean, because yeah. they're doing three things every week. They're making a, an action. Yep. They're making a comedy. And they're making a cop show. Yes. And, so, and there's a little bit of that in every one. There's some, those two guys are hilarious together. Yeah. My favorite moments are when the three of us are in my office messy fucking with each other. Those That's my great. favorite point of the, part of the show. Oh, yeah. It's so much fun. Oh, yeah. Um, ha- ha- Haley Burton um, came in, Hillary, I'm sorry, Hillary Burton came in and did an episode and is coming back. Mm-hmm. And there was a great scene with the three, the three of us and her. And it was total boys club against the, the girl. <laughs> and she can take it like a champ. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was one of my favorite scenes of the year so far, just us being the boys club. And no, you're not allowed yeah. to play. That's great. She's great. Um, I know a few people in the chat room and the fans yes. did want me to ask you this question. And the only reason, oh, let's see, it was St. Saucy, again, was the one who threw this at me. The only reason I don't ask it is because this is a writer question. OK, well, what's a, the question? The question is, uh, has there been any talk about characters from Lethal Weapon movies 2 and 3 showing up in the series? Yes. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh, Maybe you can I, say. I can oh. definitely tell you that there will be a Leo Getz. There you go. There you go, St. Saucy Chris. I, that's all I can say at this time. You've I don't know how plenty. much, right? There's going to be a Getz. That is plenty. There's, I know, and Matt Miller's talked about this. He said he's wanted to bring in a Getz. I know that there will be a Getz. Good. If they haven't cast it yet. Ooh. I'm Ooh. available. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Interesting. And Kevin might be, be also. Be... Kevin will probably get the part. That's fine. Um, no, no, I think no, he's I, I no. He's... If Kevin gets the part, then the show will bomb. You know who's going to get the part? Aaron Eckhart. And on that. <laughs> and on that. I only say that because I was so surprised. Like this work, and then because Kevin was in part of the Beverly Hills Cop remake they tried to do, and it did not go. And I was just very sure. I don't know. And I was like, of course, this one makes it. It's tough to do those. Yeah. It's tough to do those. Yeah. Any type of remake, because you're comparing it to the original. Mm-hmm. That's 
Yeah. And so it has to be different enough, but not too different and good enough. But, you know, it's just, it's a tough thing to pull off. I was, I was very reluctant. When I got the script for this in pilot season, I was like, oh, come on. No, what are you doing? What are you, why are you going to do that? Mm -hmm. That's stupid. Um, and then I read the script. I was like, oh, that's a really good, if you'd have handed me that script and not said it's Lethal Weapon, right. I'd have said, oh, this is a really, this is a pretty good, this is like funny and there's yeah. action and like, okay. And so let's go meet these people. Mm -hmm. Thank God I did, right? I'm glad you said yes <laughs> to the audition. And it's a shame you made your... Uh, to, to fight, for, go fight for the your, job. Your cardiothoracic surgeon wife sit on the curb while you went in. Like, it's that was weird, her call. It's a weird thing. That was that, her call. That you guys do that now for every audition as your it's good It's weird that charm. I make her come down every time every and sit time. outside the lot of the curb. Sit outside the studio. <laughs> oh, honey, I can't book without this. You, I, I haven't booked the last three because you were out of town. There you go. There you go. Look, <laughs> stick with Genius. what works. Stick Genius. with what works, Kevin. Um, I can't thank you enough My pleasure. for I'm coming glad I to be here. and chatting at length about all of that fun stuff with me. Um, I know I told you you're not allowed to leave until you do the Larry King game. Oh, that's right, the Larry King so, game. So uh, if you would like to sit and think about it for a second, yeah, I have a few thank yous yeah, to please, get out. Please do some okay, so take your time. You remember the rules? Okay, yeah, so I have, to, I have to... Bad Larry King. Bad Larry King. A little TMI moment. Just something about Larry, and then right before he throws to the phones, and if the city name you throw to is funny, it's not going to hurt. All okay, right. Yeah. You think about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for us here at Kevin Pollock's chat show for 2016. Um, as I said at the top, we do it for you guys. So I hope I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, of course, uh, I could not possibly make the show happen without the tremendous help of everyone in the studio today. That would be your Jason McIntyre, your Mike Duman, your Brad Register. Uh, who else do we have today? Oh, we had uh, Sonia Cabrera helping make us look uh, beautiful. Of course, as always, the magnificent Jamie Foxx. Uh, the fantastic Jamie Foxx. Is what ah, I, should probably call I like you, right? that. I love that movie. Um, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, Chacho himself, Kevin Pollack. Thank you, sir. Um, the wonderful people here at the West Side Comedy Theater. Look at this. They're just walking in my shots. Walking in Fine. shots like they own the joint. They own they the do. joint. They <laughs> do. Um, uh, they have Christmas stockings up here for us, which was lovely, because uh, they knew I was a Jew, and uh, if I touch it, I, it burns when I touch <laughs> the Christmas stockings. Um, they're not here today, but I'm also going to thank Samantha Ward, Dr. Kenny Chen, Corey Levin, and uh, Brian McCauley, because you know what? They've helped out on the show this year, too. So thanks to them, right? And Angie. And Angie! Angie Johnson. Love her to bits and pieces. Uh, I really don't think there's anyone else I've forgotten at this Brian point. Double. Brian. 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 Did you say Brian Gumble? Oh, Brian. <laughs> Jesus. I'm sorry. Brian, thanks, man. Love you. Love you to bits and pieces. No, I don't. I love Angie to bits and pieces. Ryan, you and I have to talk. Um, if you are ready. I'm ready. That is your camera. That's my camera. Go for it. So she comes out of the bathroom and I'm shitting in her cat box. <laughs> On to Poughkeepsie. <laughs> <laughs> it's Made so up. nice that both you and Larry have the we same have the same story. The same stories. <laughs> um, oh man, thank you so much my again, pleasure. Kevin. Pleasure, you Sam. are you are the best. Uh, that's it. I've already said my thank you. So until 2017, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs>